Hello friends, thanks for watching my last video on the milk. I got tremendous response in YouTube as well as in Reddit community in which I'm part of for many years. One of the question I got from the Reddit community is from Mark786110. Mark is wondering that he has got young children and he don't have any proximity to milkman. What to be done? He, he get only the packet milk. So then I thought about it. Young adult, the milk is essential, isn't it? So of course we are in lockdown period and the government has listed a certain number of essential goods and dairy products are classified as essential. Then do you know there is a concept called groupthink or herd behavior like cattle herds, herd behavior. Many of the decisions that we make everyday life has no objective reasoning at all. You know, so we just follow what the crowd is saying. One example is that you might have heard the court that the breakfast is most essential meal of the day. So I have already linked up. If you haven't watched my video on the uh, nutrition, please watch that video. I have already debunked this myth. So this saying is a constructed lie. It is a disinformation marketing propaganda by the Kellogg's in the US. It is not true at all. The, the breakfast is not that most essential meal of the day. In fact, there is no most essential meal of the day at all. So the only way to get out of this group think is by critical thinking. So unfortunately, most of us are not aware of this critical thinking. Let us critically examine the fact this the milk that is in front of me. Is it really essential? If you look back in history, the milk was invented in there are two schools of thoughts in archaeologists, you know. So one school says that it is from Mesopotamia, that is the Middle East, the present day Middle East around 8,000 to 9,000 years back. Another school says that it is in the Central Europe around 7,000 years back. Anyway, it is not that old. Our own Homo sapiens have around 3 lakh years, 300,000 years of history of which this last 8,000 years is nothing you know it is very new invention so before that human beings were not at all having any milk in their diet even today 60 percentage of the population are intolerant for the milk so they have something called lactose intolerance we tend to group the lactose intolerance as a disease but the reality is that it is not a disease it is the natural norm of the human being if you have the enzyme called lactase that can degrade the polysaccharide called lactose that is in the milk, that is not natural. So only some people have got lactase enzyme in the bloodstream. So if you have the lactase, so that means that you can digest the lactose sugar, which is a new evolutionary pattern. Lactose intolerance people are just fine. If you look at them, are they suffering a lot more bone fractures, for example, or vitamin D deficiency? Are they actually dying younger? And the vegans, you know, the pure vegetarians, so-called vegans do not consume any animal products including the milk of course milk is an animal product do they actually die younger not at all the vegans and lactose intolerance people are some of the longest living people on earth you might wonder which country in the world has got longest life expectancy it is japan do you know the average japanese live till 84 years and japan has got the lowest per capita milk consumption or dairy product consumption among the developed world oecd world see the link if you consume lesser milk you live longer you know that is not the vice versa most of these uh, the marketing gimmicks so propaganda is disinformation misinformation that is not objective reality friends if you look at the benefit of the milk you will see a lot of interesting studies and if you read the fine print there is a lot of conflict of interest most of these studies that says the milk is beneficial for human health is supported by the dairy industry there is a term for that it's called conflict of interest if the study is supported by the industries declaring that industry is good so it is not an ethical practice at all in my last video i have already explained that the milk that comes in the plastic cover contains a lot of enzyme disrupting chemicals can cause the cancer diabetes and thyroid problems as well as the pcos one thing which i missed out in that video is that the milk do contain a lot of hormones friends because the dairy industry inject a number of hormones to increase the milk production. One classical example is oxytocin and a number of steroids also getting infected into the cattle to produce you know, the milk production. 
and if you consume that all these hormones come to your system hormones also include prolactin luteinizing hormone estrogens and progesterone growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone lots of different hormones you know the concoction of the hormone is what you are going to get from the milk so it can lead to infertility and host of other problems in male as well as female you might have heard that drinking milk helps to lower the risk of the fractures right because milk contains a lot of calcium and protein you know and vitamin d and that's really good for the bones so milk is often time recommended for the females because they are more prone for diseases like osteoporosis but if you have watched my earlier video drinking milk induces osteoporosis so that is actually contrary to the popular belief that milk is better for the ladies milk is more dangerous for the ladies than for the male because of the endocrine disrupting chemicals in the milk packet milk even if you don't drink the packet milk the natural milk itself contains lot of hormones you know the injected hormones of the cow that itself can cause a lot of problems including the osteoporosis if you search in literature there is a very interesting meta analysis so meta analysis is analysis of the lot of peer reviewed studies so there is a famous 2011 meta analysis on drinking milk and a risk of developing fractures so this research has been published in journal of bone and mineral research by a swiss team so the conclusion of that meta analysis is that milk do not lower the risk of bone fractures 2014 study published in the influential journal called jama j a m a also concluded the same conclusions so this con this study involved 100000 adults that is 1 lakh adults and they followed each adult for two decades and they couldn't find any link so drinking milk do not lower the risk of developing fractures another paper published in 2014 in british medical journal bmj they analyzed around 50000 men and women in sweden the study concluded that consuming the dairy products confer no protection from the fractures for males while for the female consuming the dairy product is linked with higher rates of the fractures see that is in contrary to the popular belief so the group thing do not work most of the time the study also concluded that the risk of death is higher for both the groups friends look at that study i linked up below the description section published in bmj it says that drinking milk increases the risk of dying Yet another meta analysis published in 2007 in American Journal of Clinical Nutrition concluded that calcium uptake or calcium supplementation through milk has nothing to do with the risk of developing fractures. Friends, I have been advocate for low carbon footprint lifestyle. So if you look at that the milk is it really low carbon footprint or not? You know the dairy milk One study says that one liter of the milk is equivalent to one thousand five hundred grams, approximately one thousand five hundred grams of carbon dioxide. Now you can compare that with the soy milk; it's around four hundred grams. So much, much lesser is the soy milk or vegetable-based milk rather than non-vegetarian uh, products like the dairy. It is not sustainable at all. Friends, dairy industry constitutes four percentage of the greenhouse gas emissions on this planet Earth. As you know, the cattle are ruminant animals, and the ruminants do exhale lot of methane, and the methane is a very important greenhouse gas. So it's always better to rethink our habits for ecological sustainability. In addition, the milk also contains a lot of saturated fat. as i already told you in my earlier video saturated fats are not good for your coronary heart health so how do we vegetarians get calcium if we don't drink this animal product of the milk so of course there are so many vegetables contains a lot of calcium for example broccoli or cauliflower or oranges you know the leafy vegetables you can also include beans and lentils and pulses as part of a healthy diet in my earlier video i told you about the soya chunks soya chunks are excellent source of proteins and it is really cheap as well so i suggest you to stick with vegetarian sources of protein rather than going with the non vegetarian sources of proteins well i know the dairy industry will not appreciate this video I might get lots of dislike as well. Well, I'm fine with that, but I want to tell you the truth. So you might wonder, am I saying not to drink milk at all? Of course not. Milk is okay once in a while. Little bit of milk, just like the juice, is okay. But 
milk should not be part of the healthy lifestyle i have linked up all peer reviewed articles that affirm my assertions in this video so please look those links in the description section of the video if you find this video useful please like it and share it in the relevant group and don't forget to subscribe my channel thanks a lot and have a nice day